My guest for the morning, uh, Frida Akusia Prempe. She's a member of parliament for Tano North, and uh, she's in the studio. Thanks for joining me. Good morning, Roland. All right, and Today also... Today, mentioned my full name. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's good. good. Also, I'm surprised. I... <laughs> and also, we have Abubakar Ibrahim Day, a member of parliament for Salaga South, and thanks for joining me. Uh, a member of the Public Accounts Committee, if you watch many of the proceedings, also asking a lot of questions as well. And uh, Frida, I know, is also a member of uh, the Governance Assurance Committee as well. Yeah. Mm, always uh, also seeking answers on uh, promises that have been made or perhaps projections or goals that are supposed to be achieved by ministries, departments, and agencies that have not been. Some other time we should be asking uh, so far what's the next week they've been on. But right now, let's look at pertinent issues confronting us. Uh, we'll talk a lot more politics. Uh, we'll talk subject of religion as well. But we know that uh, the ministerial vetting should begin by a number of uh, the individuals who have been nominated by the president to occupy uh, key positions. And we're talking about uh, Neil Ante Van der Poel, who is a member of parliament for the Judiciary for the Ministry of Sports. And also, Kukuri Hagen is heading to the central region as a regional minister. Uh, used to be a deputy uh, trade minister as well. And also, we have uh, Prosper uh, Bani, who is a minister designate for the Ministry of the Interior. And Mavis Sama Frimpong, a regional minister designate for the Eastern Region. Uh, what do you make of these nominations? Okay. Good morning. Morning. Good staff. And uh, let me greet the your cherished viewers and listeners and greetings to the people of Salaga. Mm. Do they watch you on the program? Uh, some of them, those okay. who have the the, the, the digital box. The, the, yeah, yeah, okay. Will be watching me by now. So greetings to everybody. Um I think the nomination is all right. I happen to know some of them. At least I can talk for Alaji Muniru, the outgoing Northern Regional Minister who is now becoming the Minister for Agri, a very excellent person. He performed credibly at the ministry. In fact, I can say one of the best performance at the ministry. I happen to even know him when I was working at the controller. He was working at the uh, Ministry of Health. And uh, he was briefly sent to the upper, way, upper east region before brought to the northern region. And I like Minister is a very, very, very team leader who is capable of moving people and I think it's a very good nomination coming to the agri industry put some fire there we need a lot of growth in the agri sector I mean which are led to employ by 60 percent for the employees and I think he's capable and I, 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 I think let's first let me congratulate him very well for moving to that industry Neil like developer is no stranger to anybody it's when it comes to sports Somebody, the sports is in his blood. He know it. A very good commentator. Somebody, one of the best commentators we ever produced in this country. Uh, somebody who has built the sports. For me, I'm not surprised he's going there. I hope and I <laughs> wish he will be the last stop because people are saying that about seven years, seven ministers in the Ministry of Sports. Mm, Maybe he will do the magic wonder. Mm. He will, somebody who stayed longer in the sports and I pray and I think he's capable of doing that. They say, I have a record, I got to know him when he came to the trade. I was a member of the Committee of Trade for some time in the Parliament and uh, he also got this promotion. Congratulations to him. I mean, just shows a very young man who is capable of doing well. Go to the Central Region. You know, Central Region is a, they say it's a swing <laughs> region, isn't it? Yes, but it is. Are, and the last From year, the statistics. And then and 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 last year, I believe he's capable of letting us to maintain and increase our vote in the central region. Mm. And you mean the NDC, party I, in government? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> you go. Was so that why he was appointed, do you think? And then when it comes to Bani, well, he, he was a chief of staff, was taken briefly and brought back into the government. I learned, I didn't know much about it, but I learned he was a, the United Nations in terms of security or something like that. He has done it. Coming at the right time, maybe to look at the internal security system where we seem to have some few challenges there. And I believe Bani will be able to look at it, taking out from uh, wherever his predecessor have done very well. So for me, the nominations are in order. I think there are only 
Is there barely new faces? Bani wasn't a new face. He was a chief of staff that's coming back. So he just... Mm. We also have one, uh, John mm. Alexander Cohn, who has been taken as a deputy minister. Yes, or... and, and, and the northern, and the one coming from the northern regional minister, he will be Abubakar mm. or something like that. Mm. I think he will be a new face. Mm. So I don't seem to know him very much. I can't talk that. Mm. But he's a, a, a one of the people I learned he has done well in the northern region, uh, capable of performing. Okay. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm very happy with the nominations, and I believe those people can deliver. I mean, for us to continue ruling and continue being in power, mm. it's better what the people of Ghana need. That's I what see. I mean. Interesting twist. It is. <laughs> <laughs> mm, and for example, John Alexander Cohn is going to be the deputy. Uh, he's going to be the r substantive regional minister for the Ashanti, and we know that he's also contesting the seat for Bwase West as well. Yes. Very interesting connotations if we tend to look at some of the nominations. What do you make of the freedom? Yeah, Roland, let me also say a very good morning to your cherished viewers and listeners and to my constituents. I hope they're also watching you from Tan or North mm. constituency mm. through your dish. Mm. Um, I'm particularly interested in the timing. And I've been asking myself that, um, is it team? The, the, the president has the prerogative to decide on who to work with. But I've been asking myself, is this team Team A or Team B or Team C or Team yeah. X. Perhaps it's a mix. It's a mix. And what are they going to bring to the fore within these nine months? Because by the time they, they find their feet at the ministries, a month or two would have gone already. So when are they going to implement government policies? When are they going to put things right? When are they going to restructure or, or streamline affairs? I, I, I'm not particularly interested in their personalities. But I'm particularly interested in the timing and what they are going to do in the various ministries. Um, when it takes somebody like Neil and Jeff and the boy that he's talking about, I have worked with Neil and you know he's a former assemblyman. Yes, yes. And, and, you, know, two, and you two used to be an assemblyman. Yes, yeah, so here I know I know Neil and Tim very well, not only within the sports fraternity, but from assembly as well. Uh, we know the kind of person he is. So I believe that a lot of people are expecting a radical change at the sports ministry. That is, if he's, he'll be able to change things around within eight, eight months. We are in election year, so he has, to, he has to battle between his constituency, parliament, and the ministry. And now we are looking up to him to do something about the sports bill, which has been on the drawing table for a long time. What about Colts football? What about women's football? How is going to regularize the uh, academies? What is, he, what, is, what is he bringing new on board? Look at all our, sport, our, our, our stadia, our infrastructure. We have about 44 sporting disciplines. But if we relegated all those disciplines to the background, we're all talking about football. I see we have a minister, ministry of football or ministry of black stars. So a lot is expected from Neil and Tevan and I think it's a challenge. I've had the opportunity to also work with the Honorable Abeta Bongo. And he's a nice person. He chairs the communications committee of which I'm a member. I had the opportunity to travel with him for a program outside and interacted with him for a while. I believe that he's a very humble person. And considering the time left for him, he'll be able to turn things around in the north. Looking at what is happening out there. What is happening? Mm. You know what is happening. Mm. You, know, you know what is happening. The I don't have to use this, this time to talk about what mm. is happening up <laughs> north. But we are hoping that he'll be able to turn things around. But that's why initially I said I'm looking at the timing. I think the timing, well, he decides who goes mm. where at what time. So that's fine. Uh, but, but the Ashanti regional minister coming from gender, gender. I've also had the opportunity to interact with him. And I don't know what he's going to bring differently in Ashanti region. Unless, of course, he, ha he has a budget wang and the president has asked him to do certain things. Ashanti is your home region. That's where your constituency is. No, I come no, from no, Brahafu. No. Okay. They are looking at one million votes from Ashanti region. So I don't know what magic wing that Honorable um, Akon has that he's going to use to turn things around. Unless, of course... But what, what, what has the administrative regional minister got to do with the party getting a, a, a Oh, but vote? he runs the region. He runs the party of Pachikis in the region. He is, runs all the party serial the, colleagues the, in the region. The political and and we, all administration. The party serial colleagues. Oh, yeah, everybody comes to his office. So it, it's, not, it's not nothing new. Mm, that's new and thing. maybe because he's contesting in Obwasi, the president wants him to get closer to his constituents so that in terms of proximity, he'll be able to go around Obwasi all the time. That's another issue. But let me also take this opportunity to congratulate uh, Baby uh, Frimpong. He's been moved from a deputy minister to 
a minister. minister. And I think um, it's good for all of us. She's a woman. We are expecting her to deliver. And she also, she's also contesting the seat at, um, um, in one of the constituencies in the eastern region. So I think that maybe probably the president wants her to... The president wanted to also get closer to her constituency. So the president has his own intentions why he decided who goes where. But coming back, and maybe again, uh, recently we were both awarded. We had an award from the UN, and then she came to receive her award. I met her at Alisa Hotel. I was also awarded for my achievements, my focus on the Millennium Development Goals, which has metamorphosed to the SDGs. So Congratulations. I met Thank you, my brother. Mm -hmm. So she was also awarded for, I think, uh, championing the cause of women or something in the, in the region. So I think it's in the right direction. Now to Prosper Bunny. He was the chief of staff and he was removed. What I counted, what went in, why did the president decide to remove him and bring, um, who's the? Debra. Uh, Debra on board. Mm. What is he bringing new? Interior minister. Um, right now there's so many things going on. We're going for an election. Mm. He has all the security services under his ministry. Look at what is happening in Agogo. Look at what is happening in Abudus and Andanis and all that. It's, 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 a, it's a big issue. So if he has a background of security, and he can... Does he? Yeah. yeah. He work with the special the security yeah, he can in the manage. UN. That's why he was before he was brought in, I think. That's what mm. I mean. If he can manage the ministry... But Ghana's security is not only about administration. Of Sometimes. course. It's of only course. about administration. It yeah. takes a lot of things. So many yeah. things are happening around us. If you look at this Fulani issue, mm. we can't even manage Fulanis. Mm. And we, we've gone to bring um, Gitmo det uh, detainees to, uh, to Accra. <laughs> not the way she's going to. No, no, that, that, that's true. <laughs> so if we can manage our own selves within our own locality and we want to bring people internationally <laughs> to join us, it's a serious issue. <laughs> so Prosper Bani, we wish him well, but yeah. he has a lot of work on his hands. Um, as for Honorable Bideru, I mean, I don't know too... I, I, I don't know too much about it. I've been had very close interactions with him. But, but considering the fact that the agric sector is dwindling now, it's, it's going, going at 0.04 now. How is he going to revive the agri sector? Look at what is happening at Cocoa Board. Look at what is happening in our various regions and all that. It, it's, everything seems to be not in the right direction for some of the ministers who have been appointed to certain sector ministries. So it's a challenge for them to deliver. Um, and who's the other person? Ricketts. Mm. Ricketts is also another nice gentleman. And um, he's going to Central Region, taking over from another nice gentleman. Oh, yes, Aquinas. Aquinas is a very affable person, a down-to-earth person. I hope he will not go there and throw his weight about because maybe he's been given some mandate to deliver as he's saying. But that doesn't mean that he can turn and change things around within um, eight to nine months. We also work in and watching them from afar. Okay. So I, I wish all of them mm, the I best just wanted you to make just short comments. Yes, but I, I wish them all but the best. You've they taken going, a lot of... Now let's talk substantively on, on, on issues. It's only going to sustain and improve uh, upon. Sustain. Not to change. All right. <laughs> already, <laughs> no. We have already won so that. So you think we'll sit back and, pull <laughs> and wait for him to ch change his around and sustain what? Well, I'm already... Following, uh, following <laughs> the, um, the bringing into the country of um, the two Gitmo detainees... Um, a lot of concerns had been raised about Ghana's own involvement and commitment and what the reactions also of the various um, perhaps dr dramatist persona in, in all this uh, as far as uh, the issue of terrorism is. Um, we've been, uh, apparently we've, we've, we've been having uh, in the country uh, a Canadian citizen but goes by the name Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips who was secretly indicted in a 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center and deported from the United States in 1994. And he's going to apparently hold uh, some lectures in Ghana. Uh, he's expected to be in Tamale for a lecture at the Jubilee Park today titled Islamic Identity Under Globalization. And then on the 9th, you go to UDS, where Dr. Mahmoudou Baumi also had been uh, over the weekend speaking to the students about why mm. religious tolerance is important. And uh, the Constitution grants freedom of religion. And yeah. so, well, he's entitled to preach about Islam, preach about etc. But when such individuals with those connotations 
really um, are in the country and, and perhaps are doing what they are doing? Should we be concerned as individuals and key stakeholders? I start with you, Alaji. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know uh, when you say concerned uh, about what? About the emergence of terrorism or potential terrorism happening in this country? Or is it concerned about that, uh, this particular sheikh you call uh, Dr. Amina Kami or something like that? Because um, Ghana, of course, you don't take things for granted. Um, events happen to me that we should be awake and prevention is better than cure for us to do this thing. But as far as the Ghana is concerned, we have always had religion tolerance. And we never had any problem of when it comes to uh, the Ghana, even our culture. When you go to a compound house, you see a Christian, a Muslim, all mix up together. They all get up, help each other, we do everything. But that doesn't mean that this situation can be taken for granted because nurturing such people takes a long period of uh, under the ground. Somebody may be nurturing this kind of uh, consistent extremist, engagement. Extremists and go on. So if anything by, we need to protect the plurality, I mean, that kind of, uh, that we enjoy for a long time in the country or something like that. So if any citizen, and uh, don't misquote, I use the word for that, any citizen coming to try to inculcate any sort of ideas into our people, we should be concerned. But you know, I have never had a chance to listen to this, Dr. Amina, and uh, so today you come here and mention it. But from what I've read the piece and I got to know, I learned he was uh, secretly indicted. I don't mm. know what I mean by secretly indicted. And also deported from America. Because if he was actually indicted in the 1993 bombing, which is criminal, Americans would never have let him go. They would never. And why did they choose to deport him instead of rather uh, prosecuting prosecute him. him? That is something I don't understand. He uh, would do that. You see, but I was very happy in some of the topics that he's going to talk of, like uh, Islam and the press, enemies or foes, is what I'm saying. Because we need to look at sometimes the negative image given to vulnerables in the society by the press, most of it. When I say vulnerable, for example, if you come to Africa, you go to Europe, you see the images that the press give about Africa in Europe. You come to Islam, you get the same thing that sometimes either deliberate or not, give certain image of Islam by not trying to understand. And this also go on to fuel those extremists, getting annoyed, thinking that they are the receiving end, and therefore they must also react and go on. So we we'll look at those, that's why I'm saying that, looking at, I've not yet heard this lecture, we want to know what actually is going to say. After all, people, it's an open lecture. So whatever it is, whatever he's going to say, it's not like he's here secretly recruiting people or trying to uh, cultivate a kind of people who are going to be extreme, extremists because we are both extremists in Ghana and we try as much as we can. The people will not even tolerate it. If you try to be that kind of, I have, I'm a Muslim and I've been in the Islam community and, and, and we hate this and I've lived with Christians throughout my life. Even sometimes you begin to, I can tell you that 90% of my friends are more Christian than Muslims along and that make my faith more strong. I say I go to weddings in the Christian wedding, Baptist church and the red and I sit in later and go on. So it's very beautiful. So well, you, 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 you have no option. You're, 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 I, I like my faith and I'm a good Muslim. You're a key stakeholder and, and, yes. and, and, and you, you have certain friends and yes. your contemporaries and, and they will yeah. invite you to events. Yes, and I go. And I, it doesn't change my faith. And I like it being with them. And I see some Christians who come into our hours. Our, they may not enter the remorse because they find difficult to remove the, the, the sandals and the shoes. But our gatherings, weddings, funerals, everything, they attend it and they do a lot. We need to maintain it. So what I would say here is that if any person is coming to bring anything, then the scripture men should be at the light. They should be there to hear the type of language he's going to use at the lecture. They should find out whether the language he's using is going to incite people or is going to cause any kind of public this and going on. And the earlier that is done, the earlier we take him away as unwanted person like other countries have done, the better. Mm. But notwithstanding that, it's not only him. The most important is, this is open. What about the secret ones we may not know? At the same time, the secret one that we be going that we may not know. Those are more dangerous. And that than, than one the that, ones that we know. Yeah, than the one we know. That's one the secret men need to fish out and be on the light and go on. 
And then finally, we ourselves, <coughs> as Ghanaians, we have responsibility. Because security and things is a, is a collective responsibility of everybody. Nobody should sit and think that somebody should do the work or not. When we see anything that is fishy, when we see anybody trying to play a game that we don't understand, it's very necessary to draw the attention of those concerned or those decent to look at it and go. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, Ghana is a, 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 is a light, and we are going to make sure that this will avoid the coming of the two people. Much has been said about this. I don't need to talk much they about that. More. Yeah, yeah. There's so much has been said about <laughs> that. And that, that's not about what I'm saying that Ghanaian security men should be doing. Okay. They should not take things for granted in the country. We have a peaceful country. Our security is but we should not sit down and wait. Prevention is better than cure. And that's what I was saying. Well, Freeman, we're just talking about appointments and interior and all the things that are happening as far as our peoples are concerned. Indeed, if you go through the website, and these days we're always uh, very much uh, grateful to Google, you get, I mean, information about um, Sheikh Abu Bilal is public. Okay, uh, he's, uh, he's a known preacher of Islam, originally born as a Canadian, etc. But the thing is, for religious extremism, it just starts in such a way. If you become tolerant of uh, preachings, somehow people get convinced. It's about religion and the way, sometimes the way they want to go according to it. Well, I'll take it from where he left off. Abu or Ibrahim or Ibrahim Ibrahim they left yes, off. Um, yes. As <laughs> much as we have um, freedom of speech and uh, freedom of association, freedom of religion, we should also not th take things for granted. Looking at the background of Dr. Abu Bilal, like you rightly said, he was deported from the U.S. and he's even been banned from entering his own town, his own country, Canada. So you sit back and ask yourself that what accounted for this ban, what accounted for his deportation, why was he not prosecuted, like he rightly said. This, I, mean, I, don't, I haven't read much about him. But I think there's something circulating on the social media, WhatsApp. I don't know if it's the same person. He's talking about how we should manage our homes as Islamic uh, parents, how we should talk to our children. Um, have, you, have you watched? Yes, have I have watched? watched. I listened is it, to Is it the same yes, person? Yes, I think it's the same person. Okay. Yes, yeah, so. But we, we should also be looking at the content. Like what he really were, said. You, were you alarmed by the content you watched? No, from what, really. from what I listened to, I, I think he was talking about good things, you know, like how we can use Islam to teach our children, how to protect them from using the social media to do mischief and all that. But like you rightly said, what about the other meetings that we may not be able to follow? Security. Who is monitoring him? What are the security authorities doing? Not, not too long ago, we heard that some of our young people have been recruited by ISIS. And uh, I think this morning we heard another one, a Ghanaian, um, is it a Canadian born Ghanaian or, or Czech something. He's also been recruited. So um, <coughs> he, he's done it before, right? He's done it before. Now he's come back to teach about Islam. We have, because of our cultural background, because of our intermarriages, we live together in peace, in harmony. We don't really have any problem, like he's saying that there's no problem in the north, even though there is some po pockets of problems out there. So between Those Islam, are more of traditional culture, not Islam religion. and Christianity, I don't really see the, the the difference. We are all serving the same God, the same God, just that we are going, going through different channels. Yeah. So if he's coming to preach about Islam and he has a good motive, fine. But my problem is, what happens afterwards? Whom did he come with? How long is he going to be here? Under whose authorization is he going to do all those programs? Who is monitoring him? Mm. Is he doing his own thing? Or Let me ask you this. Um, just recently, we have international missionaries or pastors who come to preach to Christian communities. Yes. Uh, recently, we had one that uh, made, us, Chris. Uh, made us stop all everything we're doing to, to listen to. How different is that from the Islamic community? Different. Uh, inviting top sheikhs or speakers or preachers in the Islamic world coming to speak to young Muslims or the Islamic community about their faith? It depends on, on the personality involved. There's not any, anybody at all, any sheikh at all. There's somebody who has some cobwebs under his sleeves. There's somebody <laughs> who has gone through certain things and been banned from his own home country. 
This is somebody who has gone through, he's even been deported, he was deported from the United States. And he was even wondering why he wasn't prosecuted. So he's not anybody at all. So we need to do some background checks on this person who is coming here, or he's already here, he's even started his programs. Yes, I has. don't know whether we've done some due diligence on him. I mean, this is a security matter. Considering this Gitmo issue, the ISIS, or what is happening around us, we should not leave him to do whatever he wants to do at his own cost. I think something, somebody has to monitor. As for Pastor Chris, he couldn't have just walked into this country without authorization. Probably he sought some authorization from um, those who matter, those who have to give to him. He did he just come and ask the police to, mm. you know, just close um, some roads for him to come and have his own program. Okay. So considering what is happening around us, if you look at our own Fulani people, what is happening? So <laughs> we cannot always always Fulani, look at yeah. these ISIS people. So talking about um, <laughs> Dr. Abu Bilal Phillips, a Canadian citizen who has also been banned from entering the United Kingdom and Australia, and even his own country. It's something that rings a bell, and that I think that... We need to take a second look we at some of these We need to take a second look. The security um, mm. uh, men should be up and coming. We should monitor him. We should supervise him. We should know where he lives, where he resides, what he's doing, who he's recruiting, people around him and all that. That is, if only he's recruiting. Mm. <laughs> anyway, he's just preaching. He's, he's just, just preaching. preaching. Mm. So but but, but you get followers. But he it's, people it's, around it's, him. No, no, it's it, known no, that for I'm many of... I'm going to use the word who he's recruiting. Well, 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 if only he's recruiting. If only he's recruiting, then we have to monitor the content. But I agree with her that we need to monitor. We have to monitor. It's a security issue. But the thing is, it's been known that for all those who tend to be indoctrinated and tend to join all these um, uh, groups like ISIS, Boko Haram, etc. They start by watching tapes of some of these preachers. That's, that's, that's exactly the point I was coming okay, That's indoctrinated. It is sometimes most of our social media... They too. don't deliberately go and say, mm. come and join us. No, 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 no. Of course, it takes... Uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, culture, education, even including these social media and all the... Excuse me for my language. Most of the rubbish thing coming on our TVs and uh, because of freedom of whatever it is that people go on. For me, that is one of the problems we should look at in our country. I am not saying that even in the countries that they have closed this in, you still have these people emerging up, like the Arab country, where sometimes the strict way of communicating, freedom is not there, people still emerge up in this thing. But what we need to do is let our people understand the consequences of this thing. And I always use one word, prevention is better than cure. We cannot take things for granted. When mm. Boko Haram started in Nigeria, it was a joke. People thought, till small, small, now it has grown into a moment. I think they allowed even, it for even, about a even, decade even, to grow. Even, even three countries are I'm now... Personally, I'm not comfortable. Uh, three countries are now in Chad and uh, Cameroon and call out fighting Boko Haram, they could call in Nigeria. So we shouldn't allow anything, any small hint like this. I agree with her. Mm. Let's monitor... And when I say me here, secretly, our secret agents should be underground finally. Anything should not be taken for granted. And I repeat. And you say you are uncomfortable. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very personal. Uh, That's my I, I don't think, I, I, I. Well, but once we have mm. freedom of because, religion, because we should allow him to go. And I don't want to offend sort of by Muslim. Muslim. No, no. The sensibilities yes, yes. of the Muslim. But, uh, but I think, I, I think that, mm. um, like you rightly said, he needs to be monitored. And especially the content of the delivery. I would say not even him. Those there could him. be other people, yes. not only That's him. Really wouldn't have come alone. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about even him coming alone. The important thing is, the kudos who don't even know. We haven't heard their names. All right. They, they are, are more dangerous. But Nala recently I understand some four people yeah. also sneaked in and they were arrested at the Kotoka International. Well, they were Yemenis and they, they came Yemenis. with some fake passports passport. and, mm. so, and, and pieces. So that's why I'm happy that these are the issues that we should, we, should, we, should, we should... When people find that Ghana is a very difficult nut to crack, Okay. They will not make attempt the Center for African Democratic Affairs uh, is a new think tank, I believe. I haven't heard this one before. It uh, mm -hmm. says that the Electoral Commission's effort to sanitize the voters' register by deleting multiple names from the voters' register was unlawful and illegal. Multiple registrations are an offense under CI 72, and people will engage in such a practice, uh, who engage in such a practice, must be prosecuted in the court mm -hmm. of law. 
uh, the EC uh, may have all the necessary uh, facts and good intention, but it has no legal authority to pronounce anybody guilty of an offense of multiple registration, according to uh, Frank Adakwa Yadom, who is the executive director for SADA, as he stated in a statement. And we know that uh, uh, it's been cited in, in CI-72 that whoever um, uh, registers as a voter more than once, either at the same registration center or different centers, commits an offense. Well, what do you make of this? I have heard about them as well. But I think if, even at that level, during the last elections in 2012, those who registered more than once at some point were apprehended. Um, I came into contact with one or two people who were even handed over to the police at the time. <coughs> so even at that level, um, I think the law took its course. So well, what constitutes multiple re registration? He has, he has, he's entitled to his opinion to seek interpretation in the courts. But I think that the EC herself has admitted that the register is bloated. And it's not only bloated by multiple registrations, by people under age, by foreigners, and all that. He, she set up a committee to look into that. They had a public forum and all that. And the, the panel came out with their recommendations that there should, there should be credibility of the register. And I was even hoping that the EC would do something about the register before the limited registration takes off in March. Because the panel members recommended that the register should be cleaned. The register should be validated, should be audited, and should be de duplicated and all that. So we need to do all that before we go in for the main elections in 2000 and in, in November, on November 7th. So if he's saying that he wants to seek interpretation in, in, in the law courts, I think he's entitled to it. But I believe that um, multiple registration, as the CI 72 states, it's an offense. You don't have to register twice. So if the machine is able to detect that you've registered twice, it should be prosecuted. It should be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. And some people, I think some people were taken to, were sent to the police station, but I don't know what came out of it, whether they were cautioned because it's an offense, offense, whatever, or they were still prosecuted. We need to find out more. Well, on, 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 unless perhaps I don't know, I think it's been reported that the EC prosecuted people. Yeah. Yes. Prosecuted Only that's them. not in the public domain that is being announced, but uh, for all the names that have been removed, we're told in excess of 78,000 now or 74,000, uh, and for which the, the names are also increasing by the day because regularly they are checking. Uh, but all the 72,000 are not multiple registration. Not necessarily. There are other, other areas yes, that people... Yes, there could be other areas. Mm. Other areas. So people, apart from the multiple registration, the underage also register. We're also talking about foreigners who are on a register that needs to be cleaned and all that. So I don't know um, what is going to come out of his... Um, mm. um, you think this is just a red herring because the EC no, seems no, to be no, doing... No, no, no. I think they have a, they have, they have so, a case. So they have a case? Yeah, they have a case. In what way? Yeah, in the sense that you don't set a bad precedent. In the case that you don't... You see, when I look at it very well, what they are saying that there were multiple registrations, as you are saying. But the law says that in, if you find any offense. multiple location and uh, don't delete the person, take him to the court and allow you to delete the thing. It makes sense. Otherwise, you say can do what he likes. One, How one, do you know they cannot take my name and say it's a multiple duplication? Yeah. So he why, can were decide. They, why were they sent to the police station and prosecuted? No, no, he's taking this one. Well, doing, let's see how it happens. We are not talking about those that happen. So you're saying he that there could be a possibility people could be disenfranchised. Good. So what your case they are saying here is that, you see, I don't if you identify no, that people have multiple duplication, go to the court, get them out. Do you get the point I'm saying? get them out, let the court say that yes, confirm that they are, and then you take them out. But when you decide to do it yourself, what is the guarantee that you are doing the right thing? Do you get a point? I mean, excuse me, we are not looking at personality, we are not looking at what, whether the person is good or not. You uh, and we're, we're perhaps even not looking at what, the present good. day. It so could be when for you the look future. at it, you see, and the law stated clearly as they say that any person who registered as a voter more than once, either at the same registration center or at different registration centers, commit an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a fine not more than 500 penalty unit. So it's a criminal expert. So you just allow them, apart from that, just you yourself sitting there and remove the name. How do you know that the person there, how do we know that it's a multiple registration? Mm. What is the transparency here? 
Well, as far as I'm concerned, I think they have a case here, as they're concerned. And, uh, and, and moreover, too, once it's a criminal aspect, you don't go to move their names or not take it to the court. But the, right? but the EC will not do that solely because we have IPAC and, and no, other... No, apart from that, the EC send them to court. They were prosecuted. When they prosecuted? No, you mean, they, they mean the one yeah, they're the removing? One. The one, no, we're, we're talking that they are the doing one, exercise... No, the ones they are removing, we didn't hear them sending yes, about 72,000. That's exercise of removing people. That, that's what we need to find out. Because the EC so, so, comes to remove them before it comes to tell us. Yes, that, that is oh, why I've the removed people 72, are saying that I'm removing these names. And I think that the issue they are raising should not be seen. It's a sometime in this country we do things because... Yeah, I think all those mm. names, all those mm. people are being be removed should be prosecuted mm. and convicted. Because that's what the law says, that, like it's saying. Yes. Be because if you know you have, you have registered at police station A, why should you change your identity and go and register at police station B? What is the motive behind it? And why, why are those things happening? Okay. Is it happening in a particular but area? But there's a scenario for uh, Initially, for, I think during the early periods of the registration during the last time, when the machines were introduced the first time, yeah. the personnel were not very much conversant with the uh, computation or input of data, etc. There were people who registered, who were registered doubly um, it, it, two times or perhaps more, not by their own fault, but as a result of perhaps the inability of the... Yes. The, the, the and some of them yes. have their names removed from the register. No, whatever happened, I think... Because some of them, um, you look at the election petition, I remember vividly, I registered at um, the information services uh, yard, no. just opposite TV3. Okay. And, and some people... The first day, for example, or the, I think the beginning, the beginning period, uh, had to go and come back and be registered again. But they had their fingerprints taken the first time, even though the... So ultimately, we've got to find out that the, the data that was inputted on their, their, their bio data was not correct. And so they had to be registered again. When the machine scans those ones, they'll, they'll, they'll come so out as double registrants. There's, there's a problem in their software. Well, the software no, should be able it, to, it should be able to detect double registration and take it out immediately. Yeah, but, but that no, also constitutes double registry, even though the person did not intend. I, I, I get your point. In 2012, we are all not yeah, so that's why when you go the, to court, we'll with the biometric machine. Is okay. it the fault of the EC or the fault it's of the, the fault of the EC. EC? So when we go to court, we will know there's a fault of the and EC. And that's the more reason why some of us were surprised but, that but teachers were not allowed to man the EC. Why allow the they were EC? Not a, they were not used as uh, EC personnel, as we've been, been doing. Why the EC allowed as we've been doing all, all You think years. it was a conspiracy that the EC? Sometimes I still don't. You just don't get it. You don't want to get because. Looking at the caliber of people mm. who, who were put up at some polling centers to register people, you go there, they can't even spell your name. Okay. <laughs> I have they to end the show, though. Seriously. Yeah. Abruptly, I have to end the show. Yeah, sorry. Oh. I'm, I'm, what Why? I'm, what, I'm what? what I'm trying to no, say is that wow. the, 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 the EC cannot <laughs> arbitrarily do things the way he wants. You must follow the law and order because he's supposed to be very, very independent. And, the credible, and you can only ensure credibility when there's transparency, when the law and order is being followed. We don't want to have another case of somebody taking it to court. Mm. And then when you go to the court. Well, from, why is this steeped mm. in so much controversy? Yes. The biometric registration and the multiple registration. Mm. Why should it be concerned? Because our register is bloated. And the AC has admitted that it's bloated. So here she has to do something about Surprisingly, I understand she went and brought in some electoral com commissioner who had been sent in Kenya. To, to yeah, you know, do I, some what they take for into us. That. Abu Bakar I, I, Ibrahim I, I, Day is a member of Parliament for Salaga All South. I know that. Uh, and we are also having <laughs> in the studio a <laughs> member of Parliament for Tano <laughs> North and uh, Frida Akusia uh, Prempe is, uh, has also been our guest this morning. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. And, well, thank um, you. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll be having Seth Kwame Bwati in the studio speaking to us about his new investigative piece. And we're talking a lot more conflict. But we're talking a lot more of the victims who go through those um, terrible times and some of the scenarios they can give us in their own testimony. We're taking a break. When we come back, Sir Kwame Bwati is my guest. Amen. Thank you.